Make sure your paper's taped in your sketchbook and you're gonna grab a paintbrush. Um, I like kind of something like this, a little bit more bristly, I, I like to call it, and I'm gonna tap on a little red paint. I'm dipping that in my cup of water to create a wash. So imagine it's like watercolor paint. And I'm washing this on the first three boxes that all say wet and wet. You can use whatever colors you want here. I'm just using red straight from the jar because it makes it nice and simple. But if you want to do each one a different color or divide your little rows in multiple sections so you can experiment with different wash colors, by all means, go right ahead. I'm just going to keep mine red. Um, again, making sure I'm mixing in lots of water here to create a wash doesn't need to be perfectly even across the whole thing but kind of generally you want it to be that way now the bottom three are gonna be a little bit different I'm actually painting I'm still using red but you do whatever color you want same kind of deal you can change it up I'm still doing red though and I'm just gonna paint it directly from the jar no water this time over these next um, three strips here um, because we're working wet on dry so I'll explain a little bit more of why we did this um, as we get going here, but this is kind of the prep work you need to do to set up your paper for these techniques. So now my paper's dry, you'll see I'm, I'm working on blue, I'm letting the red dry, and here's one I had uh, prepped prior. I'm grabbing some different paint brushes uh, to try. I grabbed a matte board scrap, just like you did with your color wheel, and put some different colors on here. Whatever colors you wanna use for this is perfectly fine. Feel free to use just from the jar and mix your own. So this technique is called a smooth blend, and it's just mixing one color into another color. I'm kind of using a dark red into an orange. A couple things I wanna explain here. Um, it's called wet and wet because both of the colors that I'm blending into each other must be wet in order to blend. Now we are painting on top of a wash just because uh, that establishes a middle value for us and we will be painting on washes with our paintings anyway so you'll get a better sense of the blending um, and that's why we prepped this background um, and it's also why the color really didn't matter too much so notice here I'm bringing in some of the wet paint um, the red into the orange I'm zooming in a little bit so we can see a little bit better so I need to work relatively quickly and I want to stress that the more layers that you add on top of this the more blended it'll look so you can kind to decide do you want it to appear more blended do you want to see a little bit of the brush strokes in there um, and you can play around with it that way so now I'm gonna take a dry paintbrush with no paint on it and use it to soften my blend. This isn't something you have to do, but you can do. You can just blend with your brushes with your color, but I like to do this over top because it sort of softens my transition and creates a texture that I like. Um, and you can tend to get a little bit more of a realistic blend this way too. So notice I'm still layering it, and sometimes you just have to keep layering paint to get it blended to the way you want it to be but the process is the same mixing two colors of wet paint together and then that option is bringing that dry brush over top you could also swirl the paint around a little bit like you can just see I did with my paintbrush sometimes that's helpful too for a variation So hatching and cross-hatching is a similar process as far as you need both of your colors to be wet as you're painting. Um, but this time you're going to kind of change the movement in between um, as you're blending. So I'll kind of demonstrate that for you. So I'm going to do a lighter pink into a darker pink for this one. So painting on a swipe of the light first. Again, my color's really thick. There's, it's very wet. There's lots of color there bringing in the darker pink that I'm going to then blend. And notice how I kind of turn my paintbrush to the side and I'm starting to pull over the dark color into the light color. And then I'm going to do the opposite this way. And so I'm turning my brush and going back and forth and sort of cross hatching, but you could hatch and do one direction. Also, I'm using a bigger paintbrush, so it tends to kind of blend it out a little bit more. Whereas if I used a smaller paintbrush and brought the two colors together with cross hatching lines, I would see more of that line work. So you can kind of play around with texture here and different paintbrushes, but again, the principle is the same that the both colors of paint need to be wet.
So next up we have stippling. It's a very similar idea that you've got um, two wet colors that you're going to blend into each other. So I'm going to do kind of like a peachy color into a pink color for this example. And what you'll notice is um, I'm turning my paintbrush and sort of tapping the two colors into each other to create a blend. And same kind of idea with uh, the cross hatching and the hatching is different brushes will get you a different effect. So play around with little brushes, play around with medium brushes, big brushes, really bristly brushes, really smooth brushes. They're all going to give you a different kind of look. But the the method is the same. It's where you're taking both of those wet colors and just kind of tapping them into each other and then you'll get that blend in the middle. The more you layer it, the more blended it'll appear. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll do something like this, any one of these three blends I've just showed you, I'll let it dry and then I'll blend a little bit more on top and that usually gives more of a layer for me to build my paint onto and creates a really nice look. So next up we have scraffito, which is a wet and dry technique. So these last three we uh, put paint down a little bit thicker, let it dry. So now I'm going to put a thick um, layer of red paint on here, right on top of the dry paint. And then I'm going to turn my paintbrush around and just draw into the wet paint. That's why it's called wet paint on dry paint, because the dry paint underneath shows through the wet paint when you scratch into it. So this is a fun way to add different textures and, and try some different things. Again, play around with different paint brushes. Um, some other fun things. So this time I'm laying down some more color and I'm actually using a little brush to um, kind of scratch out or scraffito some different texture. So just to show you, you can use lots of different things. It doesn't have to be the back of your paintbrush. I also have uh, these little scraper tools that you can create lines and patterns and texture too. So just some fun things to try around um, with Glazing is a wet on dry process uh, like scraffito. So I already have dry paint down. You're actually going to make Make a wash of paint, so dip a little bit of color on your brush and mix it with some water. And you create a transparent wash that you then glaze on top of dry paint. So you can see this effect here. Um, it just gives you kind of a different uh, look. It's kind of fun. Um, you can glaze lots of different colors to create different effects. You can also mix in uh, what's called gloss medium or matte medium into your paint instead, which I'll show you here in just a second. It creates a similar effect as the water where it makes your paint um, a little bit more diluted and transparent, but the gloss dries with kind of a glossy finish and then the matte dries with a matte finish. So it will have a different effect than the water. So three options for glazing. Our next technique is called scumbling. It's dry on dry, so I've got dry paint. I'm going to take a really dry, bristly brush, and I'm going to tap just a little bit of color into it, not too much, and I'm actually going to wipe a lot off. Then, once I've got just a little bit of color, I'm going to dab some more off actually on my paper towel here because you don't want much on your brush. You want it very light and fluffy. Um, so dry paint on a dry brush on top of dry paint. So you're just going to kind of move your brush around in a circular motion and just know that you're going to create different effects with different types of brushes and the different amounts of paint that you have. So play around and experiment with scumbling. 